Welcome to another edition of Rise and Shine. I'm James Gordon. I'm Robert Battles. And I'm Henry Hassi. We're going to open the show with a brief prayer, and then we're going to jump into our subject, Welfare Reform, Perception versus Reality. Uh, bow your heads and pray with me, please. Heavenly Father, thank you for a beautiful, beautiful day. We ask that you bless those who are watching this program and bless uh, our hosts and co-hosts as, as given the program as well and those who are filming this program. We ask that you uh, take us to another uh, week of, of prosperity and, and, and continue to uh, shine your light over us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, so the welfare reform perception versus reality. Most people focus on the cost of welfare to the United States residents and non-residents alike. We all know people uh, who take advantage of welfare, but if there were a toll-free number uh, created to report welfare fraud, citizens would call in, but would the government react? In my opinion, the government would not. Uh, we're going to focus on the income potential or the income benefit to the United States of America and to you, the citizens of our welfare program. Uh, I see. Have you, uh, Robert, ever stopped to think about the fact that there's staples that stay the same price? Eggs, uh, milk, uh, and uh, bread. If you think about it, over the last 10 or 15 years, bread has always been a dollar to $2 a loaf. Uh, milk, they try to keep it around 2 to $3 a gallon. Uh, eggs, they try to keep it between a dollar and $1.50 a dozen. Uh, but if you don't think about those two or three staples that seem to stay the same, think about peanut butter. You know, peanut butter has gone in the last 10 or 15 years from a dollar or 88 cents to a dollar to four dollars uh, mm -hmm. for and three dollars for the no name brand. Uh, the the cooking oil has gone sky high. Uh, mayonnaise is a good example. Uh, Hasib, you uh, when I get to order Hasib a sandwich, he says hold the sauce and they got sauce in there. He gets a little upset at me, but something that you wouldn't buy too much of. The mayonnaise used to be a dollar a jar, a dollar for a 32 ounce jar. Is now four dollars or five dollars for that same 32 ounce jar. Uh, a bag of sugar has gone up. Saltine crackers. So crackers were a dollar a box. The national brand were a dollar a box. Now crackers are about four dollars a box. Uh, some people may call this inflation. Well, I call it devaluation. Uh, in an effort to push America toward a global economy, we have to devaluate the American dollar. Uh, we devaluate the American dollar by uh, doing things like initiating the free uh, trade agreement and by killing jobs off, uh, such as some of our, one of our biggest cities in U.S. history filed for bankruptcy recently, Detroit. Well, that city, uh, in my opinion, went bankrupt because all the high dollar jobs were canceled there. All the, non, all the union jobs were canceled because of the free trade agreements that Democrats and Republicans alike have pushed in our federal government, uh, allowing the uh, non-union companies, if you will, to come in and take the union jobs away and allowing the union jobs to move in foreign countries and bring their products back across American borders without any, any uh, tariffs. Well, Dr. Gordon, are you saying uh, this is the reason we have so much welfare in this country no. because of this? Uh, I'm saying that the, the, the gross domestic product is, uh, uh, is what we look at the income potential. You've been an accountant. The, I may be saying it wrong, but basically the uh, United States looks at the, the money it makes every, every month every year. And I say that welfare contributes to, my, my research says welfare contributes to 20 percent of our income. So even though the government sends out this free money as some people call it, the money is relied upon when we're looking at how much money the country makes, how much money the government makes. So 20 percent of the uh, government's uh, money is shown by the welfare money that's spent naturally, you know, when you give the welfare money to a person who, who has uh, less means, they're going to run out and spend it. No one's saving uh, food stamps. You can't save food stamps. Now it's electronic, and if you put it in your pocket and save it, it'll probably end up being expired at some point. And actually, I think the, the figures are more like 1 or 2 percent rather than 20 uh, percent uh, of the gross uh, uh, budget of the budget of the, the U.S. between 1 and 2 percent spent on those areas. But I like to look at the um, the idea of how a society is made up. You know, uh, most of us believe in some type of religion and uh, I, I know in in, uh, in the Bible it says that the poor will always be with you. Yeah, we'll. uh, so if the poor is going to be with uh, be with us, then I'm a I'm, uh, like to explore things. If the poor is going to be with us, then why is the poor going to be with us? 
if the human being has got the same potential, since we are all equal as human beings, then even though we got the same potential, some people are going to uh, be greater, some people are going to get breaks, uh, uh, the different things happen in life. But even with all of that, if the poor is going to be with us, then there's going to be need, a need for a welfare, what we call a welfare system, to help those that are in that condition. Well, let's look at um, what are some of the causation or factors for welfare. When we look at the economic conditions in America, and you know, most people had a false perception rather that most of the people who own welfare are African American, and that's a, dis that's a distraction. But regardless of what race, creed, color, or ethnicity they are, you know, the companies have become, the gap between the rich and the poor continues to widen in America. Right. So that you know that when the gap continues to widen, then economic deprivation is going to cause crime to rise, it's mm -hmm. going to cause a whole lot of other factors. And when they talk about the welfare, Dr. Gordon, you alluded to earlier, what relationship do you think, and can you explain to our audience about the impact that welfare has on the economy? Well, that's what we're, 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 we're saying. A lot of times folks uh, focus on the negative part of welfare. Some uh, political parties try to divide the nation when they speak about welfare recipients. But as you said, uh, uh, Robert, that the uh, majority of welfare recipients are European Americans. It's not African Americans, it's not Hispanic Americans, it's not Latin, uh, Asian Americans, it's European Americans. Uh, so when the conservative talk hosts uh, attempt to uh, pit one group against the other, uh, by speaking of cutting off welfare checks, you can't uh, cut off the welfare checks to the minorities without cutting it off to the majorities. But I think more importantly, the uh, part that never is talked about in the news or on these conservative talk shows is the benefit of the welfare dollar. Yep. The, the fact that our peanut butter is four dollars a jar uh, if they did, we didn't have the welfare state and the, the uh, recession was allowed to take place. Uh, my studies show that they cut the welfare in half, that would put America into a recession. Mm -hmm. uh, because our growth, our annual growth, though it, well, it used to be 10% uh, post-World War uh, II, after this recession uh, under President George Bush uh, started, uh, it went down to the, the, the future projections of our growth in America is 2 to 3% annually. So if, the, if you cut the welfare in half, and you, you, you uh, take the income that the welfare is generating down below that 2 or 3% growth mark, it becomes a recession. Uh, if we get into a recession, then the prices of goods go up because the money is worth even less than it is today. So today our dollar is worth about 50 cents. If you go into a recession, it's, it is it's conceivable that our dollar could be worth 25 cents. If our dollar is worth 25 cents, the peanut butter has to go higher because it's sold so in the world market which means now it has to be $6 a jar or $7 a jar. So you're making $7 an hour in a minimum wage job, or you're making $14 an hour in a little bit better job, $7 per a jar of peanut butter is still looking extremely high. And that, that's, that's the problem. That's the benefit of the welfare state. That's the one thing that no one ever looks at, is that have, having a welfare state is a way to gauge, if you would, the, the economy. Well, you know, and we are talking about welfare, and it seems to be that we're talking about it uh, from the standpoint of those that's in need. But, you know, in America, we have uh, more corporate welfare than that's we right. have uh, of giving those that's in need. Yeah, that's right. But we, we don't seem to think that that's a bad uh, deal when corporate America gets welfare. The government gives a, the, a farmer, as a matter of fact, we just that's passed right. the farm bill. Right. And uh, I understood they took off the uh, EBT, the food stamp, a portion of that, which to me didn't make any sense because you're going to give a farmer uh, uh, some welfare to not grow certain foods, uh, but then you're going to take away the food stamps from the people who need it. Look like you ought to let the farmer grow the food so the food can become cheaper so the people uh, will be able to purchase it. But instead, we have, we have put our anger, I think, in America at those who least can do anything about it. We, we, we aim it at the poor because 
we we gonna get least resistant from the poor than we are the big farmers of big corporate America. Well, I think that the the again, any aid domestically that this government that our government gives to either corporations or individuals, in essence, helps to keep the status quo. It's not necessarily uh, that they're given to the poor is better than given to the the, the corporate are given to the corporate is better than given to the poor. The po politicians will have us think that. But the fact is, in order to keep the status quo, or in order to keep things as stable as you can, these economists gauge uh, economy, or they play with the, the level of the economy, or the economic system, by putting money into the system here or there. Being here being the, the, uh, the big corporate guy, or there being the, uh, the welfare recipient. So, I don't really want to get into the, the you know, talk about, it. There's, there's not a negative about uh, you know, it, 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 the negative about it is a, is a false perception when you talk about corporate America or individuals. There's a positive part to be talked about with, with, with welfare. We're going to pause for a commercial break. If you hold that thought, uh, Brother Hasib, we'll be back right after this message. It amazes me when folk I meet in my travels ignore their pain after a wreck or a fall. Waiting may jeopardize your health. After a wreck or a fall, call me at 476-PAIN. What's that is not your fault and you don't want to use your insurance? The other person's car insurance is responsible. I'll bill them first and wait on payment from the insurance company. No money or referral is needed. Don't wait. Call now. That's 476-PAIN. The choice is yours. Innovative portrait creations, contact King Photography at 622-6777. Welcome back to the show. We're going to jump into our subject, welfare reform, perception versus reality. Brother, I see if you have some thoughts about it. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, uh, I was thinking as you were uh, was, uh, uh, making your point there about the mindset of a, of a person that uh, falls into a need. You know, the needy of the poor, as sometimes we say, that happens a lot by circumstance. But when we develop what I call a welfare mentality, a mentality of being, of wanting to be dependent and not wanting to get up and be independent, um, then I think that's worse than receiving the the funds that we receive when, when someone is trying to help us. There's two things with that thought. I think when you, when a person uh, works or fudge their numbers to get on the welfare uh, benefits, they actually have to keep themselves from doing the best that they can do, the best that they can be in order to get the benefits. So it's really a, a, a double loss. Uh, one, they, they think they're getting over on the, on the government if they're trying to uh, perpetrate something to get on the welfare, but two, uh, so the, the, the two problems is they're keeping themselves out of being as productive as they can be or as creative as they can be, but the real uh, tragedy is the government is actually benefiting from uh, that person by having someone they can put money in their hands they run out and spend it and thus keep the American dollar uh, stronger. But what, uh, if you, but what if you look at the other side of it too, Dr. Gordon? Uh, the welfare system has set a, a specific climate and uh, this climate that it has said is that only the poor are the ones who receive right. welfare, but then again, it's also producing underclass too. Right. So that when you look at welfare, which was the intention was, was to be a stepping stone for those individuals who were either in poverty mm -hmm. or either lost their job, mm -hmm. now it's becoming a, another underclass mm -hmm. because uh, what, what am I going to do if I could go to work, Dr. Gordon, and work for you for seven days a week, but I could get welfare and get free subsidized mm -hmm. housing 
and then the economy is so dire right now mm -hmm. that the impact is, is far greater for you to be off of welfare than the, in the sense that you go mm -hmm. to work. Mm -hmm. And then you got all the jobs that you mentioned earlier that are being because of the, the, the free trade agreement or being transported overseas mm -hmm. that's caused a negative impact. So is there really any difference between giving in the sentence to get off of welfare? Well, Robert, there's a saying that I heard. It said that the rich need the poor and the poor needs the rich. And what I believe that saying is saying is that we all need each other. Uh, if the rich didn't have uh, the poor to work for them, then probably going to cease to be rich. Uh, I believe, uh, you know, in, uh, but in the rich the beginning. Ain't hungry, though, but the rich ain't hungry, Well, I'm, I'm just saying, we need each other. We right. have to see that there, there's a need because um, if the rich, and that's what I think the attitude nowadays is, we don't need the poor anymore, so we want to just cut everything off well, and just, I guess... I the, think they're trying to cut the middle guy out. I mean, the poor, they, they, got, the they poor, want the they poor. Got, yeah, the, they don't want the, that's sort of the middle class, uh, that'd be us. That's right. They're trying to cut that section out. Well, we don't need, you don't need the middle class. Well, and I mean, some people's we, opinion. Hear, we hear and all the talk about, uh, like we said, they did not pass the EBT. They had, they're going to have that back. Well, they're going to have to add it back, that's but we positive. know that they didn't, and the gesture that they're, they're making, uh, that we don't, we're not for the poor anymore. But we need each other, and that's all I'm trying to say. In any society, you're going to have those who excel. Uh, and you're gonna have those that uh, are coming to some type of misfortune. That's just that's just life uh, uh, that you do. You can have the greatest dreams, and you may achieve them, or you may fall down by the wayside. I'm saying, don't develop a mindset, a welfare mind, which is more important than actually uh, being down today. Where you can be up tomorrow. Could you define I mean, a welfare mind, though, brother? Yeah, well, or have well, you experienced anyone ever been on welfare? I mean, well, uh, they, yes. they went from on, went from not welfare to on welfare. Uh, and yeah, I, and, and vice ways. versa. It goes both ways. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I know people that have been on uh, uh, welfare and food stamps, and, and a lot of us. Have, who's have been on, by show of hands, who's been on food stamps? I'm on food stamps. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I I've mean, those are the things that, that happen. But the important thing is not to develop a, a mindset. So that don't make you better than a person or worse, uh, 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 less than another person who's not. We got to revamp what, uh, how we look at this welfare system. Welfare, in my opinion, should be used to help a person get up, to make a family stronger. That's but right. instead, the welfare system has been used to divide the family, as you say. Mm -hmm. When the woman get on welfare, she can't have the man in the house legally. Well, I think it should just be the opposite of that. I think if you got a family, you should keep that family together. The 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 help that you give that family should be to keep them together, not to divide them. When we divide the family structure here, whether we call it welfare or other things, then we destroy. America and we destroy the social order of the human being. But Brother Hasi, one question to you real quick. What would you respond to the point that the problem is greed? Greed whether it's on the welfare mm -hmm. recipient mm -hmm. or whether it's on the rich, you know. Right. So what medium does that play between both of the, the riches getting greedy because they continue right. to get rich mm -hmm. and the poor continue to get poor and push them down into the same type of psychological position? Well, I believe, Robert, that greed is a disease. Uh, uh, they're just like uh, getting uh, cancer and all these other things. It's more of a mental di disease, but people who get that disease seem to not be able to control it. It doesn't matter if they get a, a million dollars, a billion dollars. When the greed set in, they're going to want more and more. And so it is even with the poor. Even though they don't have anything, when we develop that mentality, of uh, a greed-type mentality, mentality, then we want to try to get everything for ourselves, even though uh, by getting everything ourselves, it may cause the, the next person to suffer even more, which is going to eventually cause us to suffer. But you know, in conclusion, uh, I, I called Dr. Cornel West one time, was talking about this dichotomy between the rich and the poor. And he said, well, Mr. Bell, when you really look at it, you have to look at the indifference 
Now, I didn't really know mm -hmm. what indifference meant. Mm -hmm. So I went back and Googled it again. Mm -hmm. And what it really means is what we're coming to a final conclusion now. It means that I could see you doing bad. I could have all the means necessary to help alleviate the conditions that caused it that type of behavior. Mm -hmm. But I have no concern about that. Right. Or your suffering and your pain. So. Where is the greed? Is the greed on the welfare recipients or is it on the person who has the wealth of the nation that continue to be the gap is wide? Well, we're gonna, we're gonna, let me uh, pause and we're going to take a, a brief break and we have a, about uh, five or ten more minutes left of the show. We're going to take a brief break. We'll come right back after these important messages. h h Financial Services in Mobile has over 20 years experience in accounting, bookkeeping, appraisals, real estate, and year-round tax preparations. Give them a call today at 251-438-1620 or visit them at 1560 St. Stephen's Road in Mobile. Let your money grow in our care at h h Financial Services. We'd like for you to join us each Sunday for Rise and Shine with Robert Battles, James Gordon, and Henry Harseeb on Fox 10 at 5.30 a.m. each Sunday morning. We'd like for you to join us so that we can provide you with information that will be beneficial to you and to your family. Do this exercise with me. Make a fist and extend your arm. Point the fist toward the ceiling and bend your arm. That's right, it starts with me. After your car wreck, call 476-PAIN. The choice is yours. Welcome back to our final segment of this edition, talking about uh, welfare reform, perception versus reality. I see you have some uh, thoughts that's going to give us a rise and shine moment. Well, I uh, was, was, was thinking on this welfare uh, thing, that, you know, they got a quote in the scripture that it says, Am I my brother's keeper? Wow, and wow. I think if we um, kind of change our mindset on how we think about each other, you know, uh, People that's on a welfare, it kind of remind me of uh, children in school. They uh, take children in school and they separate them. They even uh, think they got uh, what they call a learning disability class. Right. And these children that's in the learning disability class, they seem to be more a problem because of the label that's being put on them. So maybe we should change that name from welfare to maybe a helping hand, uh, a helping hand to get up or something. But I see you. When you're talking about the welfare system, perception versus reality, what about, you know, there are some downsides to it too. And one of the downsides that I see is that there have been generations of people Mm -hmm. I know family who for 30 and 40 years, their whole family was raised mm -hmm. and, 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 and they developed that same, same type of attitude right. of no incentive to move to the level of, of moving out of poverty. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, uh, you know, President Clinton, I believe it was, that had the welfare to work. Yeah. And I th thought that was a good start. I thought we should uh, 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 really have worked that even more. But you know, after him, then we we, we change uh, change parties uh, as, as far as uh, there and other priorities came. But I thought welfare to work was a good program because in order to bring that type of mind into the working class, because that's what we want to do. We want to take them from the poor to the working class, the working uh, middle class there to be able to get it. So you got that means you're gonna have to provide education. And uh, you're going to have to provide opportunities, work right. opportunities. Well, right. My thought has always been the line is pretty blurry in Washington, D.C. and in Montgomery. And I think the welfare of the work, I'm not certain which president took it off. It is off now, but I'm not sure if it was the Democrat president or the Republican mm -hmm. president. So we'll do that for another debate. But the uh, thing about the welfare is the individual that chooses to stay on welfare, chooses to stay out of the main lane of the of, of, of progress, if you will, they say, okay, I'm going to stay here and just get by, uh, so we're going to go ahead and just do the welfare deal. But welfare is uh, not only, it's not only, you know, for the poor person or to help that poor person, uh, help them be a stepping stone. Mm -hmm. So there's some people that really won't, don't care that that person use the welfare as a stepping stone. If they use it as a stepping stone and many people come off welfare, 
then who would we give the money to to spend it? Mm -hmm. Now, one thing President Bush did do is uh, a few years back is he gave six hundred dollars uh, tax rebate to those who paid in, in, the, in the federal tax, mm -hmm. uh, of, you know, overpayment, causing a refund to the to the wealthier, to those mm -hmm. taxpayers. But what didn't what that didn't spur the economy because if you paid in a few thousand dollars or, or six hundred dollars in taxes, you didn't run out and spend the six hundred dollars. So that's the whole. That was the whole argument for the welfare uh, system. The welfare system was supposed to be a stepping stone, so the Democrats liked it, and the, the Republicans liked it because it's going to help the economy to be stable. Mm -hmm. It's going to stabilize the dollar, stabilize the economy. So when you give money to someone who doesn't run out and spend the money, uh, nothing happens in the economy. This economy does not move unless money is in circulation. Right. So the whole purpose of the welfare state, uh, for some who are supporting, is to keep the economy moving. And then for some who are supported, uh, as Democrats, it would be to help that person who, who's the least of these, of being my brother's keeper. So you have two reasons to, to, to have welfare as we know it, and that's why you'll see sometimes, uh, I believe in the, uh, you know, over the years, uh, a, a mother with two kids was getting like two two four hundred dollars in food stamps, and now she's maybe getting about you know four to five hundred dollars in food stamps because it 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 uh, it's basically there to help stabilize the economy, and both parties voted for that same for that same increase. I'm gonna do uh, closing remarks, and uh, Brother Battles will go with you, and then Brother Hasib, if we would, so we can wrap this up. I really think uh, Dr. Gordon and Brother Hasib that when we talk about the issue of welfare reform versus reality that we really need to focus on what are the benefits it's going to do to increase the quality of life for our people. And we hope that you can move from a period that will give you the incentive that you would like to move as a stepping stone, as Dr. Gardner alluded to, to move into the mainstream of the society. And, and I would just say that uh, when we talk about welfare, we can't group everybody into the same uh, uh, situation because you got people who may be sick, disabled, then you got the working poor, uh, so you got different groups and then you got them who just want to be on welfare for the sake. We can't group everybody so I, I, I think it's a subject that we need to talk about uh, even more in the future there. Well my, my final thoughts would be that the uh, welfare uh, is, is there's a uh, dichotomy, there's two, there's two avenues if you would uh, for, for welfare. And the, the benefits to the country of folks who are on welfare far outweighs the, the fraud or the people who are on welfare. Uh, thank you for tuning in this ep uh, edition, and please join us next week for another edition of Rise and Shine.